Good evening. It is so great to be able to be back together tonight uh, through the internet to study and, and look at another portion of God's Word as, as we consider the topic and the importance as we've been talking about of communion of taking of the Lord's Supper on, on Sunday, every, every first day of the week. And as we looked at last week, we, we saw God's design in the Lord's Supper and the, the importance of us taking it is it's a memorial. And, and we, we talk about that and we hear that often that we, we do this to remember Him. To remember the sacrifice. And as we talked about last week, we, we see that, that it, it didn't seem to have the impact when Jesus instituted it. Because they were continuing to argue about who would be the greatest. But then, after the resurrection of Jesus, after all that was accomplished, He was glorified in the death, burial, and resurrection. We see and understand the, the importance. And it's a memorial. And, and, and what memorials were intended to do, as we talked about last week. Well, tonight we're going to talk about another aspect of communion. A very important aspect. An aspect uh, I think we, in, in our lives, understand, understand the importance of family. We're about to celebrate Thanksgiving, and a lot of us, for Thanksgiving, we uh, gather together with our family, and that's a, a very important time. And we, we share in, in a meal, and we share together in the, the company, in the presence of the ones we love. And communion is a family thing. Uh, the word, the English word that we use, communion, it comes from the, the Greek word koinonia, which is fellowship, but communion in, in, in our, just our English definition, it is, uh, we hear it, common union. There's a, there's a common union. And, and what we see in, in families is that families have something in common. Now, the joke is that, that sometimes all that a family has in common is their last name. Uh, we know that's, that's, that can be true, but it, it rarely is that that's the only thing that families have in common. Families usually share something in common. And we also use the term family uh, not just for blood relatives. We, we've heard this said before, and, and we know in the church, but I'm talking even, even, in, uh, even in society we hear this. That, that family is not just about flesh and blood. That family is, is about that common union. The things we have in common. And you'll hear sports teams call each other family because it's based on that those those commonalities those things that they have in common but uh, looking at communion is there another English word that sounds very similar to communion in your minds community I'm assuming you said yes you're right <laughs> if you said community and, and it's almost exactly the same you have common union and you have common unity and that's community. And, and looking at uh, dictionary definition, a community is a social group of any size whose members reside in a specific locality, share government, and often have a common cultural and historical heritage. It's a local, locality, locality <laughs> sorry, inhabited by such a group, a social, religious, occupational, or other group sharing common characteristics or interests and perceived or perceiving itself as distinct in some respect from the larger society within which it exists. Uh, the business community, the community of scholars uh, are some examples. A group of associated nations sharing common interests or common heritage. Uh, the community of Western Europe. And we understand this. We talk about our community that we are in, in, uh, in the Mobile area is a community uh, within a larger community, the state of Al or within a larger society, the state of Alabama, within a larger, even yet, the, the United States of America, Within even the larger the world. 
And so a community is, is, is identified by those things, uh, locality, and what's in common. Well, in, uh, in, in the body of Christ, we are a community. We're a community of believers. And, and communion is that common union that we have. That's why we get that word. It's about, it's a family thing. And even what we call it is because it's a family thing. God intended when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, He gathered together His disciples, His community, His family. The ones He's already identified in as His family. He says, who are my brothers and sisters? Those who believe. You are my brothers and sisters and my mother. You are my family. And as he's there with his disciples instituting and in, in, in having that first supper or last supper, however you want to look at it, together with them before he dies, he looks at them and he says, this is my family. And we're doing this together as a family. And then when, when, when Paul in, in 1 Corinthians 11, it's the same thing. It's, it's family together. And as we come together on Sunday morning, we are together with our family. And we have something in common. What identifies us as a community or the common union that we have? Look at Ephesians 4.13. Ephesians 4.13 uh, in, in the whole context of Ephesians 4 is, is the church. The church and what, uh, what is the purpose of the church is, is, is the context of Ephesians 4. And he goes through and he talks about all these one statements. And then he says here in verse 13, Until we all attain to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a mature man, to the measure of stature, which belongs to the fullness of Christ. And what's Paul saying here? He's saying, as a family, as the body of Christ, as, as this family, our common union, what makes us a family, our common, our common union is Christ. And when we become Christians, when we, when we obey the gospel and are in Christ, we become family. In the Lord's Supper, communion, that's what it is. It's about family gathering together and remembering the memorial that we talked about last week. The memorial of, of the sacrifice that Jesus made for us that gave us the ability to be a part of the family. It's a family thing. Families have something in common. And what we have in common is the greatest thing we have in common. We've talked a lot about over the years the, the phileo love. That, that phileo is different than agape in that phileo love is, is that friendship love. That, that enjoying to be, enjoying being together type of love. And, and that's, that only happens when there's a common interest. But what greater common interest can we have than Jesus Christ? There is none. No football team, no, no hobby, no, no career, no place of business. Nothing can have the, the, the power of the common interest that we as Christians have in Christ that makes us family. Communion, it's a family thing. Families have something in common, but also families should spend time together. And we've all heard the, the, the statistics of, uh, and, and, and they're important, and we, we need to look at how, how strong families, how many times a week they should meet together, should eat meals together um, around a dinner table and that kind of thing, and the importance of, of family togetherness and what happens. And as we look in our society, man, it's, uh, it's, it's amazing. I saw a post the other day where, where somebody says the... Uh, that um, 
they were talking about divorce rate and stuff and that a lot of divorces that the average time and I don't know I mean this was a preacher that does a lot of work in in families and stuff and and so um, I don't know exactly the the resources that he used to obtain this but he talked about uh, talking to each other spouses talking to each other for four minutes a day only four minutes a day or less than could you imagine? And, and we see in our society with technology and, and cell phones that, that, that will being together, <laughs> will be together, but not be being together. Be in the same room, talking to other people, sometimes clear across the country, and yet not even talking to the ones we love the most, our family. There's an importance of families spending quality time together. And the same is true in the body of Christ. We have to spend time together. Uh, because if we do not spend time together, we will grow apart. It's the same with, with physical, with relationships that we have in the, in, in, in the world. In, in our physical families, if we do not spend time together, we will grow apart. Same is true in the body of Christ. And, and communion is, is that central time of, of coming together. That's what communion is about. Family coming together and remembering that common interest we have that brought us together in the first place. Jesus Christ. The word in the Greek for communion, uh, we talk about koinonia, is, is fellowship. Uh, look at Acts 2.42, the example that we have. And we talk so much about the example we have in the early church. Look at Acts 2.42. They were, notice this word, continually. What does that mean? Often they were getting together, continually devoting themselves to the apostles' teaching, to fellowship, koinonia, getting together as community, as family, and to the breaking of bread, communion, and to prayer. Do we see the importance that they put in the focus they put on being together as a family? And that's what, that's what the Lord's Supper is about. It's about coming together as a family and the memorial, remembering Christ that brings us together. That's why we can you we will hear sometimes the question, well, can and this was a concern during the during the pandemic. And and we understand that we were together through the internet and in that and in and it was the mindset of being together with the family, but but uh, there's people that say, Well, I can just take communion on my I can just take the Lord's Supper. I don't need to go to to the the assembly to to participate in the Lord's Supper. I have a relationship with God. Uh, you lose something. Something so important, something that God intended for us to have that fellowship, that community, that togetherness with the family. And we need to be taking of the Lord's Supper together. And together means a couple of things. It means physically together, but also in unity. That goal in Ephesians that we see for the church, the church is to have unity in Christ. But unity, as, as you look at unity throughout the Bible, it's about being of the same, you'll hear this in the Bible a lot, being of one mind, being of the same mind. It's, a much, it's as much about being, being of the same mind as our family as it is about being together. Now being together physically is, is as important, they're equally important, but there's also being together a mind because what happens is sometimes Sometimes you can come together and be physically together, but be, be divided from one another. And we see that, and we'll look in a minute, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, which is the communion, the, the communion chapter, the Lord's Supper chapter, the one we go to often, isn't it? Um, before Lord, the Lord's Supper is, is 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Well, right before he goes into the Lord's Supper, he talks about the divisions that they have. That, and, and, and a lot of scholars and commentators and, and some of my teachers in, in Bible college, 
and said that they believe that that uh, part of the issue with with communion that Paul had was that they were even in the text suggests that they were even coming together at different times to the assembly so that they didn't have to take the Lord's Supper with somebody else. And they were divided. They were divided in mind. They were, they were in contention with one another. And Paul says, you're missing the point. You're missing the point of communion. As Jesus gathered his disciples there together and says, this is our family. This is my brothers and my sisters. This is my family. And you take this in remembrance of me. I'm about to die. And now as we take it, he has died and he has risen. And we take that to remember so that we don't forget. So that we have that knowledge and continue to pass it on to others. To continue to motivate us in our life. And we can't take it with our family. Because we're divided? Man, whew, there's an importance to families spending time together and being together. And, and here's what it comes to. Families are held together by love. That's what keeps us together. Because as we look at all of the, the talk of unity in Ephesians chapter 4 and the talk of unity all throughout the uh, first Corinthians with all the division that was going on there, was did Paul ever say and ever expect that you will always agree on everything? You will never have an issue with your family. Well, we know that isn't the case. We see it all throughout the Bible. We see it today. In your physical families, do you always see eye to eye on everything all the time? Woo, if you do, come teach me because we don't. <laughs> and that's not what they're talking about with unity. It's that love is what holds families together. In love, now this is agape love. Agape love takes no account of wrongs. It keeps no record of wrongdoing. Agape love, uh, yes, there's going to be differences. Yes, there's going to be uh, some, some contention and some, some of those kind of things. But love overcomes those things. And families are held together by love. Uh, we see in, in, in a physical family, uh, one of the most important relationship, I believe, um, the most important relationship, because if this relationship is not together, the relationship with the children will not be there, uh, will be more difficult as well, is the marriage relationship. In Ephesians 5, verse 22 and following, we have the marriage chapter, don't we? Where, where we see uh, Paul giving instruction in, in marriage and, and relating that to the, the relationship between Christ and the church. And so we see here, uh, look at two things, and, and, and we know the, the context. So we'll go down to verse 33, where he kind of sums up what he just said. Verse 33 says, Nevertheless, each individual among you also is to love his own wife, even as himself, and the wife must see to it that she respects her husband. And so we see two things here in, that are important in the marriage relationship, which is the family, which holds the family together, is love and respect. And love, uh, love and respect become the, the, the things that hold the family together. And then Paul relates this. He says, I'm not even speaking about marriage. I'm speaking about Christ in the church. Jesus' teachings are rooted deeply in love. In the love that Christ has for us and our respect that we have for Him. The love He has for us holds the family together. Because as Christ loved us, what are we to do? Love one another. And as we come together as a community, as a family of believers... 
taking the Lord's Supper that needs to be done in love for our family as we remember Jesus together. As we just talked about in Corinthians, the problem in 1 Corinthians was that there were divisions amongst the church. And Paul saw these divisions were evident in the taking of the Lord's Supper. Like I said before, there were even some coming at different times so that they didn't have to be with their family. As we partake of the Lord's Supper each first day of the week, we need to remember that God intended it to be a family thing where our family comes together in love and remembers Jesus Christ. What a great thing it is to be a part of the family. To be part of a family that loves one another. To be a part of a family that's held together by the common interests we have and the greatest common interest we could ever have in Jesus Christ. But we know that you need to be a part of the family to have that family environment and experience. If you are not a part of the family, if you are not in Christ, if you have not obeyed the gospel, why would you wait? And if you have obeyed the gospel and are a part of the family, you need to love the family. You need to be together with the family because we have this common interest in Christ that holds us together. If you're ready to obey the gospel or you have any need at all, won't you please reach out to us? Let's pray together. Dear God, we are so thankful for the family that you've allowed us to be a part of. To be able to be called your family is the greatest thing that I can imagine. But we know that sometimes, as with our physical families, there are uh, disagreements and difficulties. And I pray that as we see those come up in our, in our church family, that we will remember uh, to have that agape love for one another. Because we know we do things that disappoint you, but you have loved us so much that you gave us your son to hold us together. We pray that as we continue this study of communion and in the Lord's Supper, that we will be able to, to grow in our understanding that will um, help us to, to better live out the principles of your word and, and to desire to even more to come together with our family, to, to be together and to partake of the Lord's Supper together as we remember your son. And we're so thankful for Jesus. And it's through his name we pray. Amen.